أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلي على رسول كريم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters today I will touch upon a topic which I can see that from the faces of people who know the topic are pretty excited about it is about friendship it is about the essence of friendship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has created mankind to be a social creator we have to be social we are created in that way in fact the word insan the scholars say the word insan one of its meanings is one who finds comfort in others somebody who finds comfort in others they want to live with others so it is by default that a human being does not want to live alone you don't want to live alone they want to live with family with friends with communities in societies they want to bring people together you want to form that kind of bond bonds that keep you together bonds that at times benefit us and at times even harm us that is the kind of bonds that human beings form with one another the quran and the sunnah it has very clear guidelines very clear guidelines on who you should be friend what kind of friend you should have and what are the rights of such a friend and that is what we are going to look at today friendship it is considered a sacred bond a sacred bond between two individuals it is built on mutual trust respect and looking after each other and most importantly love between the two individuals islam this religion of ours it emphasizes the importance of brotherhood and sisterhood amongst the believers rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said a believer is the brother of another believer they are like family when you consider brothers say right? it's family one believer is a brother to another believer and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said be a good friend in fact it helps you taste the sweetness of iman tasting the sweetness of iman is having a good friend it is a sign of iman he said there are three things that if a person has they have perfected iman and one of those three things is to love is to have a friend purely for the sake of allah purely for the sake of allah the only purpose of that friendship is the love of allah for the sake of the religion you meet him or her for the sake of allah you part ways with them for the sake of allah it is not like you are going to get any business transaction out of it there is no mutual benefit out of it that is not the purpose of the friendship the purpose is only connection by allah connection for allah connection through allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imagine imagine this in the swing as an iman growing in you because you have such a friend so analyze your friends the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said told us a beautiful hadith and which also shows us the human psychology he said souls of people the souls of people are like divided units of an army human being the souls they divide in structures and they come together to form that army they come together to form that army who do they form it with with all the people that they like 
So the like-minded structures or souls of different people, they come together to form that kind of army. There is a deep understanding in this hadith, if you think about it. Even in armies of today, the generals, what they do, the leaders, they often keep the like-minded people together. You fight together. Why? Because they understand each other better. When the time comes, they can trust each other. They fight together. They are able to defend each other when the time comes. If you don't like somebody, are you really going to defend them? We probably go away. Let them get and get hurt. So the tendency to like each other, that is the coming together of an army. So there is a lot of hikmah in this hadith, if you look at it. Coming together of hearts in this man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminds us that the brotherhood, the Muslim brotherhood, is one of the biggest gifts that he has given to us. It is one of the biggest gifts that he has given to mankind. A priceless gift. We cannot put a price to it. A blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, it is our sharia that allows us to choose our friends. It allows you to choose your friends. You don't choose your family. You don't choose your relatives. You choose your friends. There is not necessarily a bond of blood in friendship. But you choose your friends. So you should choose them wisely. Choose them wisely. And there is a difference between befriending someone and being friendly with something. Right? Being friendly, that should be the default. You're supposed to be friendly with Muslims, with non-Muslims, with people who are pious, with people who are not so pious. You're friendly with everybody. Your colleagues, your acquaintances, anybody and everybody on the streets, you be friendly. That is the default. Supposed to be good to everybody. Right? Because one who is not friendly, they are arrogant. You don't want such people. People who do not act in a decent manner. In Islam, being friendly is the default. But when you step, take another step, then you need to befriend somebody. Having that kind of good friend is the next level. You cannot be friends with everybody, right? You have to be friendly with them. But being friends, that's a different level. You go a level higher. You choose. You associate. You think, this is the person that I want to associate with. This is the person which I, with whom I want to form such a bond that is unbreakable. You choose who you're doing deal with that. You choose who is your sahib, your closest one. And you connect with them at a higher level. The Prophet when he said, Choose a good believer to be your sahib. Choose a good believer to be your sahib. One who has taqwa. One who you, who you would want to invite into your houses. One who you would want to share a meal with. A true friend in Islam is expected to be trustworthy, loyal, supportive all the time. That are the characteristics of being a true friend. And the Quran says the believers, man and woman, are like allies of one another, support structures of one another. It encourages Muslims. Islam encourages Muslims to find. Friends who are righteous and pious and on the right path. People of good character. So choose wisely again. Prophet ﷺ, he said in another hadith, he said, a person is likely to follow the faith of his friend. So if your friend is not so righteous, going by this hadith, there is a high probability that you are not going to be righteous enough. 
So fear that thought. It is a thought that you need to be fearing about. Evil friends can cause your doubts. They will make you walk down the wrong paths. Righteous friends will make you walk the right path. And that is what we want. You don't want your friends to be the ones responsible for dragging you down in this deal, in the in this world, as well as in the Akhirah. You don't want that to happen. You don't want such friends. If if your friends are such, then question yourself, why are they your friends in the first place? Why are they your friends? Question yourself again and again. One of the etiquettes of friendship is that you help and support your friends when there is a need. Help, in, help one another in being righteous, in being pious, in day-to-day -day needs, whatever it might be. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your needs if you take care of the needs of your fellow friends and Muslims and believers. So think about that. Think about taking care of people's needs so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of your needs. The Prophet sallallahu he used to constantly ask about people around. About his friends, about his sahaba. Where is Abu Huraira? Where is Abu Dhar? Where is so and so? As soon as they, he couldn't see them, he couldn't spot them, he would inquire about them. Consciously asking about his friends. If someone needed funds, Prophet ﷺ would actively go finding for those funds. Salman al Fasi he needed funds to become a free man. A fundraiser was conducted within the masjid to make sure that Salman became free. So you do whatever you can within your limits to help your friend who is in need. A righteous friend, of course. On the manners, is also to go out of your way to give gifts to your friends. Give them gifts. Be generous to them. Show them the value of your friendship. Show them all of that. Show that you genuinely care for your Muslim brother or sister. Islam, it teaches us that we have to be believers in the first. And as believers, we should be forgiving and merciful to one so your friend might do some small mistakes, so you should be willing to forgive him. He mustn't do it. After all, you connect on the 90 other things. Why to point out the two things that you don't connect on? Just think about it. Be merciful in that regards. Having a good friendship is not just about having a social bond. Let us understand that. It is a strong spiritual bond that we are talking about. One which is full of values, one which is full of faith. It is an etiquette of being a friend that you be a mirror to your friend. What do you mean by that? What does a mirror do? A mirror, it gives you a true reflection of your own self. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you see that a hair is out of place, you set it right. You see that there is a mark on your clothes, you set it right. You see that you see that there is a sludge on your body and you clean it up. So the mirror gives you a true reflection of your own self. What is good in me and what is bad in me? A true friend is exactly the same. They reflect you, they tell you what is good in you and what is bad in me. You need to have that kind of trust in your friends, in your closest of friends, so that they can point out your mistakes as well. And you should be willing to accept those mistakes. Just like you cannot get angry at a mirror, right? Mirror is showing that there is a mark on your clothes. You don't get angry at the mirror. How can there be, I am perfect? You don't do that. Exactly the same way, you don't do that to a friend. You accept if he's or she is saying that there is something wrong about you. Something wrong that you have done. A wrong that you might have committed. 
you should be willing to fix yourself. At the same time, if you are that ox of your friend, that mirror image of your friend, make sure that when you tell them about something that is not right about them, you do it in a subtle manner. You do it in a tactful manner. You do it using the right word so that it has the right effect. You should say it in such a way that it gets on the nerves of your friend. Appreciate and then give the feedback. And if you are the one who is getting the feedback, fix yourself. Fix yourself. None of us is perfect. We are all human beings. We are not perfect. But if a friend is pointing out some flaws in you, try to fix it. Go ahead and do that. A group friend is also one who points out your group things, a friend's group things, in public as well as in private. Something is good about you, they mention it. Look at the manner in which Rasulullah he used to speak in one of his khutbah. He is telling the Sahaba, He's saying that I have repaid everyone, everything that I had owed. Except Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu I cannot repay him. I cannot repay him in this dunya. The wealth of Abu Bakr, so much has it helped me, that no other wealth has helped me. What is the Prophet doing? He is praising Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhiallahu in public. In a khutbah, he is showing the value of Abu Bakr Siddiq, he is showing the value of their friendship, he is showing how close he was to Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhiallahu So we follow the same. We praise our friends in public and in private. We do not hesitate from doing that. It is a good act to follow, just like the Prophet has shown us. And at the same time, you do not allow the honor of your friend to be smeared, to be smudged. You do not want that. You cannot allow that. You defend your friend in public and private as well, just like you praise them. You defend them as well. You defend them. If there is something wrong being said about your friend in their absence. And if you do that, Allah will defend your face from the fire of the jihad. That is beyond imagination. You defend your friend in this dunya, in his absence, and Allah will defend your face from that fire of Jahannam. Amazing as it is, subhanAllah. Cover up the faults of your friend. Cover them up if it is not a public matter. If your friend has submitted a sin, cover it up. You don't have to expose him. You don't have to tell people about it. You have to correct him and try to fix it. But don't have to expose it. You don't have to call it out at the top of the hill. Don't shout it out. And when you do have a good friend, when you have the righteous friend beside you, don't be foolish enough to lose that pledge. Don't be foolish enough to break that friendship. Be friends with compassion, with understanding, with shared love. Rasulullah in its regards, he says, don't be jealous of your friend. Being jealous is one of the prime reasons why friendships break. Don't be jealous of your friend. Don't spy on your friend. Don't Hint if your friend is being successful in, in a particular matter. Don't try to get the latest gossip about your friend. Don't outbid your friend if he is bidding for a particular item, trying to buy or something. All of you brothers, all of you believers are brothers to one another. And the hadith goes on. Remember your friend in your du'as. Remember your friend in your du'as when your friend is not in front of you. Seek what your friend needs in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
a friend needs wealth, is going through a difficult financial times, make dua for him. A friend is going through difficulty with regards to their health, physical health, mental health, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix him. And what happens if you do that? Angel comes down and he says, Ameen. Not only do they say Ameen, they make the same dua for you. May you have the same wealth that you are after. May you have the same help that you have sought for your friend. Subhanallah. Amazing values that Islam gives us. Imagine, imagine living in a society when each and every one is making dua for another. Imagine that kind of society. When you're constantly worried about making dua for your friend more than your own. What kind of society, what kind of community we can create? Imagine doing that. Go. Oh. So, as I was saying, when we can make dua for our friends in this way, why be miserly in making dua? It is so easy. Just raise your hands and ask Allah for your, whatever your friend needs. Why be miserly in making dua? Why not give it that due importance? If you make dua, my dear brothers and sisters, for your friends, your own heart will get purified, will get cleansed, and will be the best of it all. All the evil that is there in your heart will be removed. Subhanallah. Think about it. You love another person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Form that special connection with people. And when you do form, go and tell that brother or sister, I love you for the sake of Allah. I appreciate the good that you have done for me. I value our friendship more than I can even say it in words. And say this before it is too late. Before it is too late. Because the tide is coming, isn't it? The time for you to leave this world or for your friend to leave this world. One of you has to go early. And when that does happen, when that time happens, when you or your friend goes away, it is the duty of a friend to try to attend that janaza of his camp. Sacrifice your daily routine and try your best to get to the janaza of your friend. As long as it is reasonable, you can even fly out to attend that janaza. That is how much value, brotherhood and friendship in Islam there is. And once a friend passes away, make sure that you stay in touch with their family, with their relatives, with their phones. Show that that friendship was not only while your friend lasted. It went beyond. Make dua for your friend even when they are not alive anymore. Make dua for your friends. In the narration, a lady came to the Prophet wasallam, and Aisha radiallahu anha had never seen her. The Prophet وسلم, as soon as the lady came, he softened up. He started welcoming her. He started making her sit down. He gave her food. He became compassionate towards her. Aisha radiallahu anha was, who is this lady? I've never seen her before. And the Prophet وسلم, said, this lady is the best friend of Khadija. It's the swing. So he was maintaining that relationship with the friend of his friends. And that's what we are expected to do. Maintain relationship with the friends of your friend. Even after they have gone. This increases your iman. This develops your iman. This helps you taste the sweetness of iman. When you start thinking of others more than your own selves. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet also said in one narration that a good friend is like a seller of perfume. Like a seller of perfume. Either you purchase the perfume from him and you smell good. Either he gifts it to you and you smell good. Or the least, 
his presence, because he's constantly selling perfume, gives you the essence of scent, of perfume. So there's only good coming from your friend. There is nothing else. That is the value. That is the essence of a good French, my dear brothers and sisters. On the day of judgment, there are only going to be seven types of people who will be sheltered under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only seven types of people who will not get any punishment. And one of those seven types are two people who were friends with one another for the sake of Allah alone. Now, people of this world who are supposedly friends on the day of judgment will become enemies on the day of judgment. They'll hide from one another. But people of taqwa, true believers, true friendship, those are the only ones who will remain friends on that day as well. On the day of judgment. True friendship does not last a lifetime. It lasts for eternity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us such friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with such friends who we enter Jannah with together and who we live with in Jannah together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us and help us to walk the righteous fire. May He help us to understand the hikmah. May He help us to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. May He help us to stay far away from haram. May He forgive us for all of our sins. Wa athru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. If I saw lunch, who's what's